Hello and welcome back to Planet Zoo, where we are building the Antwerp Zoo in the game. Um, in between episodes, I said I would change these, but um, because there was uh, there are actual signs, um, like wall signs that have like uh, where is it? It's a lion, but this is too small, and there's no tiger in a similar fashion. Then there's these signs and those are too big so I decided not to change them. I also went ahead and um, added some added the staff room here just so people ha or staff has a staff room to go to and I think this is a quarantine room yeah I think yeah quarantine which a nice little fire is there um, so at least we have those buildings I think it wasn't there also it yeah, the trade uh, the trade center here. So we have those buildings, and we don't need to worry about them anymore. Now, in today's episode, um, we will work on the flamingo exhibit and the uh, flamingo restaurant. With the flamingo res um, exhibit or enclosure is right here, and the restaurant is right about here. And then there's a path running in between them. So that is what we will build today. Um, so let's get right into the time lapse. So the flamingos in the Antwerp Zoo are in fact American flamingos and not the uh, European African greater flamingo, um, which is also why I put some Latin music in the background. Uh, all of the music I use in these kind of videos is made by Kevin McLeod, which you might know because he makes like really good uh, music that, that you can use in your own videos. All you need to do is go to his website, make an account, uh, and make sure to uh, give him the credit underneath each video that you use the music from. It's really great music, it has all kinds of uh, different types, like Latin music, but also more country music, Irish music, so it's really great. So today we are doing this uh, flamingo exhibit which is really simple. I'll show the actual picture of the actual enclosure uh, on screen right now. It's really simple. It's, it's basically a pond uh, and some plants. I might even say it's kind of bland. It's the first enclosure that people see in the zoo, but it's not really that special. It's just a pond with some plants. Uh, so that basically sums up this entire enclosure. But I, I still try to make it look nice by using some nice plants, I guess. Um, so we did this hard edge. There's no actual fence on that side of the pond. Uh, the flamingos do not get out there, even though there's no fence on that side. I think it's because the pond at that uh, in that area is quite deep. So yeah, they don't get out that side. Uh, there's also a nice little fountain in the pond, uh, which we will add later. Uh, but right now we're just working on this uh, hard edge. I think it it was a bit too too big, but the assets the assets themselves are really big. So and right here I tried to get the fence in, but decided just to to wait uh, and continue doing this. <laughs> I, I was all over the place while I, I while I was building this. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's a bit wide at this edge if you compare it to the real. Uh, enclosure it's not that wide of an edge but yeah the the assets are not that or are, are really big in game if you compare the, them to real life uh, and then I decided to add these hedges these hedges um, uh, it was hard to get them like looking nice because uh, they're so straight then I moved on to the uh, greenhouse that is attached to the bird building um, and the bird building houses several other birds like uh, I think is it African penguins and stuff like that but that's for later ep episodes but um, yeah this little greenhouse uh, connects to that uh, building I just did the site that was visible from the flamingo enclosure in this episode the rest of the building is for next episode from what I could find the flamingos were moved a lot throughout the years in the 19th century, the flamingos were located more inwards at the bottom of the zoo. Uh, over the years, their location changed quite often. In 1876, the flamingo enclosure was moved to make room for the lion palace. 
1952, they took a central position in front of the building uh, we built last episode. Uh, in the picture on screen now, you can see the Flamingo restaurant with the Flamingo enclosure located on the screen. In 1993, the Flamingo enclosure was once again moved, this time to make room for a gift shop. And then more recently, in 2016, the big overhaul of the zoo's entrance and the Flamingo Square, we arrive at the current outlook of the Flamingo enclosure as the first thing the guests see as they enter the zoo. So at this point in the time lapse, I started populating the uh, enclosure with uh, foliage, basically just some trees, some bushes. Uh, I had a, a lot of difficulty finding the right tree because I wanted like this large uh, stem before it, uh, it went into the uh, leaves of the tree. Um, and then I also made some mistakes here. Uh, I put uh, some foliage where there shouldn't be foliage, as you can see there I moved the tree, I put some nice flowers there, and then I moved on to this light, uh, this, uh, what is it, foraging thing. Uh, from pictures, I could tell that this was like a really dirty thing, where the flamingos could like forage for food, um, and there were some plants in there, so actually I'm quite happy with how that turned out. If, if I look to reference pictures, it's actually quite close to what it actually is. Uh, then I messed around trying to put it somewhere else, had to do the dirt all over again. But in the end it, it looks really nice because there's also some water so it looks like really dirty. Uh, then I finished this path there and moved some more uh, plants over there to make everything look nice. Then I actually put in the path uh, but I made a mistake there, it's too close uh, to the building right there. So we have to change, I'll have to change that. Um, I'm still debating whether or not I should continue this sandy color all throughout the park. Uh, if I should uh, maybe mix it up uh, with some actual path. Because it, uh, in the end it's, it's going to take a lot of assets, a lot of work uh, to do that. So yeah, and then I finish up this uh, greenhouse. Made it a bit wider, I was kind of debating how wide it should be. In the end, uh, I settled on this weird compromise. <laughs> then I um, I was kind of thinking of uh, doing an interior for this building, but it was really hard because we have these... Um, yeah, it's not like half walls or, or... It's really difficult to make an interior on such a small scale. I actually discovered that my uh, zoo will not be a one-to-one -one scale, but more uh, like one meter in this thing should be two meters in real life or something, so it's not really, it's one to two, yeah. Uh, so that's the kind of uh, entrance to the, uh, where they stock the birds, I guess, <laughs> where they keep the birds uh, inside in winter time, I guess. Uh, the path was really a pain in the ass as always. Such a great game as Planet Zoo, pa uh, placing paths is really just a pain in the ass. But anyways, it's behind the scenes you don't really notice. You only see uh, the weird path glitch when the zookeepers actually go inside the uh, exhibit. And uh, then I put this like nice little blue roof on top of this building. Uh, might have to change that once we actually do the, the building itself. Yeah, I think for now that will do. Uh, and then I needed to figure out the right height here. And uh, put in this. Yeah. I'm, I might change this as we as we actually tackle the building in the next episode. But for now, uh, this uh, this was good enough for me. So then I moved on to the next thing uh, in a second here, and that was uh, putting in some more foliage into the uh, dirty foraging spot, and then putting in a fountain right here. Uh, I messed a bit with the different uh, strength uh, for the fountains, settled on the medium one I think, and then I moved um, on to this uh, path right here. So this is actually where the exit of the zoo is, uh, there's like this round thing, but I think that was one of the last things I did. Uh, I decided to start on the uh, Flamingo restaurant and then move it uh, in the right spot. So uh, let's talk a bit history here. The 
Django Resonance was built in 1893 by a New Zealand who I mentioned in the previous video already. There used to be a Swiss chalet on the spot where the uh, restaurant stands today that is part of the large construction projects at the Fin de Siècle, the end of the 19th century, it had to make way for a new restaurant. The ar architecture style of the building is described as neo louis XVI in reference to Louis XVI, the King of France who was beheaded during the French Revolution. Throughout the years, uh, and especially after the Second World War, the building was tweaked a lot. The interior was changed quite often and the terrace in front of the restaurant was made wider. Uh, originally there used to be a glass overhang on the front, but somewhere along the line that was removed. So the easy thing about these kinds of buildings is that they are so repetitive, they can just make like one side of the building or one aspect of the building and then copy it, as you can see right here. You just have to really uh, take into consideration or pay attention to the changes or the aspects where the building disrupts that uh, repetition. Like on these corners right there, I put the acid a bit higher than the, on the other, on the normal windows. It really contrasts or makes uh, this corner pop out. Then you also have the difference in height with uh, a little balustrade on the higher building but not on the lower uh, side of the building as you can see right here and then I just copied that uh, over and over so yeah and then, as you can see here I just basically copied this entire side and moved it to the other side finished the roof and <laughs> in, an, in no matter of time uh, it's almost complete and then we have this wider section, I believe this was where the bar used to be, I'm not sure if the bar is still there. I couldn't really find any pictures of the interior, which is also why I didn't, uh, didn't decorate the interior that much. If I can get access to some uh, interior pictures, uh, I might do that. Like, same reason here, I didn't put any windows on this side, it's because I just don't know what that side looks like because I didn't have any pictures so that might all still be up to change then I moved on to the terrace in front of the uh, building uh, I mess a lot with the daylight cycle because I wanted to have it, everything lit up it turned out there's like no good angle for the sun to light up the terrace which is a shame uh, I think you should be able to like move the, the sun to where you want it to but that's not really that realistic if you think about that. Um, I was kind of thinking of doing the interior there but decided not to. And then I just, I, I looked, uh, I tried to put in the, or I moved on to the uh, flower bed in front of the, uh, and next to the building. I tried to do it up to scale but it was a, it was really difficult. If you don't have like no good reference pictures and you only have to go off of uh, Google Maps and Google uh, or the few Google Street View things that are inside the zoo it can get really hard but I think it turned out really well in the end because even though there's not much uh, pictures and stuff like that I just use my imagination and, and it still turns out really nice and has the same feel as the zoo I think that's one of the big takeaways or big um, things from this series is that it might look like the actual zoo of Antwerp but there's still going to be a lot of differences with the actual zoo uh, because of yeah, like just limitations of the game. So I actually lined up the building. Uh, I actually had to take out my uh, my ruler and put it on my screen and look where the building was kind of located in in, in uh, like comparison to the bigger building we built in the last episode. And it turns out it was actually, uh, what is it, perpendicular, like 90, 90 degrees uh, angle there. So that turned out really nice. I could just do that and move it where it should be. Um, I think in the end, the actual Flamingo restaurant turned out bigger than it actually is. If you compare the scale, I think it's actually quite a lot bigger. But I hope that won't give me any issues in the future because a lot of the areas it, it's now taking is actually where the path should be but uh, don't worry about that we'll just, we'll just wing it <laughs> no. um, 
I think it turned out really nice. And as I said, I continued this um, flower bed uh, going off of the Google uh, Earth or Google Maps uh, images, which might be out of date by now, but uh, these, these are the kind of things that change a lot, like uh, change these kind of things like uh, flower beds and plants and stuff. They tend to change that every now and then, but um, as I said earlier, it's not my goal to make a perfect representation of the zoo, but just the general layout, the general look of the building. If, if we get a flower bed wrong, who's gonna care? I mean, if you care about that kind of stuff, I'm sorry, but yeah, I think, I think it, it was accurate to what I saw on pictures and on Google uh, Earth. Um, so I basically copied the same plants over and over again. Then I moved on to the statue at the corner here. Uh, in reality, it is a statue of a cheetah made by Albert Collin, who gifted them to the zoo in 1953. But yeah, in game, there's no statue of a cheetah, so I had to go with a lion. So, as we're nearing the end of the episode here, there were still uh, quite some details to finish up. First of all, I, uh, there was this tree which uh, had, had this like, special place, I guess, for it. Uh, as, I, uh, as always, I struggled to find the right tree to put in there, but I went with this one in the end. Put it some dirt to make it look a bit nicer than just this fountain. Um, I also needed to finish the barriers over here, uh, put them or run up along all the flower beds, put the flower beds so it's actually visible, actual bushes. Uh, tried to put in this exit, but decided uh, to go with it uh, later on. Uh, just finish the path first before that before I do that uh, as you can see here uh, it's nothing special just running the path to the end there and then I uh, came back to this exit so it's like this circular thing uh, it's a one-way thing uh, as you can go you can only go through it like one way because uh, it's meant as an exit to keep people from going into the zoo like um, through that path, I don't think it's actually possible that it's to uh, to exit where they come out. So, so of course, like visitors will also go in this uh, through there. Then we had these bushes, and uh, that was basically the last thing I did on camera. I added some more bushes in the background and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, let's let's move into the live game now, where I have put the flamingos into their enclosure. So let's have a look. So you are here in the game, and the flamingos are in their exhibit. I had to do some small changes. For example, um, I had to put a fence here because they were able to just walk out. Uh, I think for the rest everything is all right. They can no longer walk out there. Um, I think there's some yeah, there's more flamingos arriving here. I also put in this temporarily uh, temporary bushes and the temporary uh, vet uh, surgery building yeah just to keep our animals healthy for now yeah they're looking happy in their new exhibit or e enclosure I should say uh, let me see yeah so we have some nice flamingos they don't n really look pink I hope that changes over time they have a lot of water. Oh, this one is <laughs> swimming here. Nice. And we have this nice little building. We have guests coming in. So, everything is going alright. So, this will be the end of the episode. If you like this, please consider giving the video a like. And subscribe if you want to see more. Goodbye!